The following program is paid for by Main Street Living. Hi, I'm Pastor Matthew Harrison, president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Starting in the late 1950s, Lutheran Hour Ministries aired a television program called This is the Life in their efforts to bring Christ to the nations. It was a critically acclaimed show that used story and drama to convey eternal truths from God's Word. And it featured actors who were just getting started in their careers. Recently, Lutheran Hour Ministries, in partnership with Main Street Living, remastered and brought to HD quality about 50 of these programs. You may notice some young actors who have become very famous. And even though the props and styles are of the 1960s and 70s, the subject matter is still very relevant. So please sit back and enjoy this week's episode of This is the Life. Well, I bought me a ring, shiny and new. Now I got these big bank payments too. And the little old wife who's gotta be fed. There's a steep grade ahead. I'm working so hard, my bones all ache, and I still got 36 payments to make. I should have been a hobo like my daddy instead. Steep grade ahead. You know what they promise, just to get our vote. If you work real hard, you'll do okay. Well, say ain't that a joke. Got the wolf outside my door And I'm seeing that critter more and more It ain't no use, cause like I said Steep grade ahead Al, something bothering you tonight? No, nothing. Except knowing I'll be away from you again for a week. Sometimes I wish you'd never gone into this business. Those long hauls. Huh? I miss you, too. Mm. Can't you hire a co-driver somehow? I don't know. Maybe. One of these days. You know, when you're away so long, by yourself, I wake up at night, scared you'll go to sleep at the wheel or something. Honey, I told you, my friend. Bought this new rig and went into business for myself. That it was going to be all up at first. It was going to pay off, Peg. Wait and see. Right. Well, Al, be sure there'd be no screw up. Piece of cake, man. And nothing happens to my rig. Only to what's in the trailer. And all I have to do is just park my rig at the truck stop tomorrow and go in and get something to eat. You come out, find your rig gone, you holler for Smokey. Two G's, just for dawdling over some coffee. And nobody gets hurt. Only the insurance company, they can afford it. What you pay him for? I gotta be off my rocker to even be talking to you. Suit yourself. In my arms, the loan sharks are gonna break if they don't get their dough. You sure nothing can go wrong? I already told you, man. That's why we cut the driver in instead of. Uh... We like to think of it as uh, cutting down on the violence in society. You just said the magic word, two grand. You can pay off your bills, go home and enjoy that sweet little wife of yours. Okay, I'm in. Yes, sir. You're gonna remember that as the best cup of coffee you ever had.
Ohio. Oh, how you doing, Shirley? Oh, not bad. How's the rig? Oh, it's still rolling. Yeah? Where are you headed? Philly. Got me a whole load of uh, colored TV sets. Hey, that's terrific. I'm really glad things are working out for you. It took a lot of guts turning Wildcatter. Yeah, we're just playing dumbness. Oh, go on. You're going to make it. That is if I don't stand here gas until you start. What do you have? Well, let me take a look. You were out. Everything okay? Yeah. Apple pie's real good today. Want me to save you some? Sure, thanks. <clears throat> to your headquarters later. Yeah, anything at all, Sheriff. Any way at all I can help. I'll call the uh, shipper and the insurance company right away. Ever been hit before? No, sir. I've been lucky. Maybe that's why they got away with it. I just wasn't watching. I never left a rig unlocked before. Can I take her out of here now? As soon as we finish checking for evidence. Please. I'd like you to take a look. Seems we have a homicide. such close friends. Maybe you can help just being there. Up to you, though. Something's happened. 
It's about your husband. I'm sorry, ma'am. What's happened? He's been shot. Is he... Uh... He's dead. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Linda. I'm sorry. How? Shot? Who, who, who did it? We don't know. We found his body a half mile off Highway 14 near Al's rig. It was a hijacking. I was just having something to eat at the truck stop. It all happened so fast. I was just having something to eat. I didn't find out until... Oh, it's crazy. Hank would, would never be mixed up in anything like that. Of course not. Well, that's what I told him. Ma'am, we're not accusing your husband of anything. He could have been just an innocent witness. I... who did it? Find who did it. Oh, Faye. Oh, Faye. Sorry about your friend. I thought you said nobody would get hurt. Hey, hold on a minute, partner. That's why I wanted to see you. Everything was going all right till this here buddy of yours butts in, thinks our driver is you. Then when your buddy won't play ball, wasn't anything else we could do. I didn't buy any part of murder. Unfortunately, chum, you got yourself a piece of it now. But there ain't no reason to worry. Stuff's already been fenced. No tracks. Nothing to worry about. As long as you keep on playing it cool with old Smokey. So I just forget my buddy. Right on, partner. I told the guys you'd play ball. Death is a terrible mystery, and all we can do is carry our grief to the cross of Jesus. We only know that God's love enfolds us beyond the grave, just as it does here. His love is no mystery. It's the one sure thing we can count on in times of trouble like this. Amen. doggone fix. Lord of all the dirty tricks. Why didn't I just stay in bed? Steep grade ahead. I feel so rotten, stupid too. Nothing left for me to do except for wishing I was dead. Steep grade ahead. You know what they promised. Just to get our boat If you work real hard You'll do okay Well, say ain't that a joke Carrying such a heavy load Flammable I might explode Feeling blue and seeing red Steep grade ahead Jail if I will and hell if I won't. Either way, it's like I said, steep grade ahead. Steep grade ahead. 
There's nothing here that can't wait till morning, Al. It's mostly junk mail and some bills. Good. I'm really beat. I'm so glad you don't have any more hauls till Monday. You need a break. Yeah. Working on the engine and cleaning the rig and catching hey, up hey, on... Hey. Squeezing a little time for us, okay? <laughs> mm. Mm. There's one thing, though, you'll have to do. What? Go see Linda. She wants your advice about selling Hank's rig. Look, I just don't want to get into everything again. Not right now. I can't, Peg. Oh, I know. You're tired. But it won't take long, Al. And I'm very worried about her. It's like she's on the edge of a breakdown. <sighs> she still has Hank's rig parked in her backyard. When I went over there the other day, she was out polishing it. Crying. She doesn't go anywhere anymore, not even to church. You and Hank were so close. She needs somebody now, and I can't reach her. You're the one who can help Linda the most right now. I have a fire most every night. A little one. Hank so loved this fireplace. I appreciate your coming over tonight, Al. I, I know how tired you must be. Well, it's the least I could do. Hank used to come home so beat, too. Look, uh, I've done my crying. I won't start again now. Is there anything I can do besides trying to find a buyer for his rig? Just let me lean on you and Peg a little while longer for moral support. I'll start looking for a job. It'll do me good to get out. Stop this brooding. This hating. You have no idea how much time I spend hating. Wanting to see his killer dead. Do you think they'll ever find out why he was in your rig? She was trying to stop him. How do you know? Well, he just figures uh, his car was parked at the cafe. My rig gone. It's got to be what happened. Well, all I know is that the only answer for me is to try and pull myself out of this horrible depression and try to start functioning again. Hank would want me to. Do you know why I don't go to church? Because I'm afraid I'll... I'll see his casket up there by the altar. But I, I should go. Hank would want that too. Look, Al. Maybe if I go with you and Peg tomorrow to communion, maybe if I go with the both of you, it'll help. Okay? I, uh... I don't think I'll be able to go, Linda. I've got so much to do. Please, Al. 
I don't think I have the strength to go along. Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Come on, it's our turn. given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed 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 for you. I can see why I couldn't touch that cup of yours this morning. Not my cup, Al. Christ's. Whatever. The point is, I have no right to ask forgiveness from man or God till maybe someday after I've done all I can to make up for everything. You're wrong. In spite of what you've done, because of what you've done, you need the forgiveness Christ offers. You're a sinner, and Christ took all sins on himself. What you did, what everybody did, Christ took it all. And he gives us back forgiveness in the sacrament. You know that, Al. All I know is I've got to make it up to Linda and Peg. I don't know how, but I've got to do something. How do I tell them? Maybe I can... I don't know. I better go and get it over with. Tell the police. Al, wait. Now you listen. You need God's help right now like a... Like a runaway rig needs an escape ramp. You're gonna crash emotionally and spiritually if you don't steer yourself straight into God's waiting help. And I'm talking forgiveness, Al. 
Christ bought it for you with his own blood. And he's giving it back to you. Guilty as you are, as sick of yourself as you are, as desperate and strangled by remorse as you are, God's help and forgiveness is waiting for you. That's what this is all about. You can never undo the terrible things you've done. You can't even make up for them. But Christ invites you to drink from his cup as a sinner who knows he's a sinner, but who also knows that Christ died for sinners. I've got something to tell you. I don't even know how to begin. The program is produced by Lutheran Television, a division of the International Lutheran Layman's League, in cooperation with the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and is presented by this station as a service to the religious life of the community. I hope you found this program to be both entertaining and insightful. Even though the show was filmed decades ago, the concerns of those days seem to parallel many situations of today. We'll be back next week with another episode of This is the Life. In the meantime, I invite you to seek further wisdom from God's Word, the Bible, and I invite you to visit one of our congregations in your area. We are the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and you will find our 6,000 congregations listed at www.lcms.org. This program has been brought to you by Main Street Living, which relies on the generosity of viewers to support this programming. They appreciate your prayers and would also appreciate your financial support. You can view additional episodes of This Is The Life on the Main Street Living website. Thanks for watching. And join us again next week, same time, same channel, for another episode of This is the Life. This has been a production of Main Street Living Incorporated in conjunction with the South Dakota District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate and its member churches. Send your comments and contributions to Main Street Living, 1400 South Duluth Avenue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105.